So this, this morning's scripture and sermon is going to be a, a little bit different, so um, bear with me and I hope you enjoy it. When I went to seminary, as you would expect, I took all of the usual classes. I took um, courses on the Bible, I took a class on church history, um, I took a, a class on pastoral care, I took a class on Christian theology. And I think when you go to graduate school, the prerequisite is that they have to teach you all these new words that you never heard before that nobody else uses. And so I went to seminary and all of a sudden people are talking about hermeneutics, soteriology, exegesis, eisegesis, the difference between consubstantiation and transubstantiation. And, and the truth is, when I first heard those words, I, need, I went home, I had to look them up in the dictionary to find out what the heck the professors were talking about. But looking back on it, the best course I took in seminary, the one that had the most lasting impact on both my life and my faith, was entitled, and this was really the title in, in the course book, The Gospel According to Mother Goose. <laughs> and the primary book for the course was The Uses of Enchantment by Bruno Bettelheim, who was a professor at the University of Chicago and a psychologist that worked primarily with autistic children. There were two insights from that course that um, have continued to stay with me and kind of shape my thinking and shape how I read the Bible and then, of course, shape how I preach and I lead worship. The first insight was the tremendous power of stories and their place in kind of the fabric of our individual lives and in the fabric of our cultural lives. Stories are those memories that we pull from the past into the moment to share that kind of remind us of our history and our values of where we came from and who we are. And you all know that. We all know that together. Whenever you gather with family or you gather with good friends um, that you maybe haven't seen for a while, how often do you sit down and say, remember when? Right? And it's not just remembering some past event, but sharing those memories are a way to kind of pull that history and those values and something of who you are from then into this very moment. And the second insight from that course, The Gospel According to Mother Goose, is that the Bible is primarily a story or a collection of stories. It is people looking at the events in their lives and in their history, looking back and kind of telling them to kind of help give meaning to who they were as a community of faith. For the Jewish community, it was taking the experience of the Exodus and then looking back to kind of tell that story and to give it meaning, or the experience of the Babylonian exile, which fundamentally shaped the Jewish community and looking back and kind of telling the story of the people. For the Christian community, it was the experience of the resurrection, the disciples' experience of the resurrection, and then looking back and telling the story of Jesus to remember who he was and what he taught, but also about what it meant to be a part of that early Christian community, to name yourself as a follower of Jesus. If we read the Bible, if you read the Bible primarily as textbook or newspaper, I think you misunderstand and misread and miss the message of the text. So with that in introduction, I'd like to tell you a story this morning um, from Joshua 4 in Hebrew scriptures. But before I start the story, a two-minute Bible study. I don't think, how many of you know who Joshua was? Yeah. So a little bit about who Joshua was. So Moses, who was the great patriarch of the Jewish people, whose um, mother who was an Israelite slave in Egypt um, 
kind of put him in a basket and floated him down the river so that Fa where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing and Pharaoh's daughter saw the little basket with the baby in it and took the baby and raised Moses in Pharaoh's court. And Moses, who was the one who later confronted Pharaoh about the injustice of the Israelites who were slaves and led the people um, out of Egypt and across the Red Sea and into the wilderness and led them during that time in the wilderness. Moses was the one who received from God the Ten Commandments. Moses died in the wilderness within sight of the Promised Land but never reaching it. And Joshua was the one who was appointed leader after Moses whose responsibility it was, was to lead the people in that last stage of the journey in the wilderness to what they understood to be the promised land. The second piece, the second Bible study piece here is that the name Joshua and Jesus are the same name. Joshua isn't the name in Hebrew and Jesus is the name in Aramaic. But they are the same name, and the name means God saves, or God saves the people. So hearing a little bit, as you will, this morning, a little bit about a story of Joshua, and kind of knowing that the name Joshua and Jesus are the same, kind of allow that to impact how you read some of the stories about Jesus and his ministry. Any, any Jewish person hearing the story of Jesus told would immediately make the connection between Jesus and Joshua and kind of the impact of those stories. So you ready? The story from Joshua 4 from the Paul Alcorn translation of the Bible. If you want to read the extended version, um, it's in chapter 4. So here, here they were. All those years in the wilderness behind them, that kind of barely life and death territory somewhere between um, the Red Sea in Egypt and the Jordan River leading into what is now Israel. They finally, after all those years, after what felt and seemed like a lifetime, they had made it. Children had been born, Kids had grown up, grandparents had died, all in that time, but here they were, finally, with the wilderness behind them and all of that meant, and the promised land in front of them with all of the hope that it held. I have to imagine that they were like children on um, the morning of Christmas Day, or maybe even some of you on Christmas Day morning. Here we are, let's rush down the step to the tree and plunge into the water. We're finally here. Let's get across the river. And just as about, just about as they are ready to kind of plunge into the river and walk, rush across the Jordan River to the Promised Land, Joshua says, stop. Don't set foot in the river. And like you can imagine, like, what are you talking about? It's been a lifetime in the desert. The river is here. The promised land is there. Stop right now. And Joshua said, before you go into the river, I want one person from each of the 12 tribes of Israel to pick up the largest stone that they can and put it on their shoulders. And maybe you can help them to pick up this stone and walk across the river. And when you get to the other side, put it down. It's like, what are you talking about? Why? And this is the response that Joshua gave. So that in the days to come, when you are safe and settled and secure in the promised land, and you are walking along the banks of the river with your children or your grandchildren, they're going to see this pile of stones that is out of place, that shouldn't be there. 
and they're going to turn and they're going to say, Mama, Papa, Nana, why? And in that moment, you will have the opportunity to tell them the story of God's providence and care leading the people out of Egypt and through the wilderness to the promised land and how God watched over and kept us each and every step of the way. In the moment they ask why, you will have the chance to tell the story. Believing as I do that the Bible is not just about then, but also about now. And not just about them, but also about you and me. And also knowing the power and importance and meaning of stories. The story about Joshua and the pile of stones leads me to this question. What pile of stones are you building in your life? That causes, that would cause another person walking by to kind of see who you are and what you do and how you act and how you treat other people that would see that and turn and ask you why. And in that moment, what will you say? What story will you have to tell? Mama, you don't know that person. Why do you treat them that way? I treated them that way because if that's the way that I would want to be treated if I ever found myself in a similar circumstance or if for you, if at another time in your life you ever find yourself in a moment like that, I would hope other people would treat you that way. Papa, if, if, if I say that, I'm, I'm the only one in my class that would I would stand out. Everybody else is saying this. Like, I, I'm not sure I can do that. Remember the song we sang in worship on Sunday? This little light of mine? Hide it under a bushel? No, all around the whole wide world? I believe that. Nana, they, they, why do you even care? They don't live near us. They don't look like us. They don't talk like us. Why do you, why do you worry about them? Because I love God. And I believe all of us are children of God. And that makes them family my sisters and brothers. Take a stone from the river, Joshua said, and put it on your shoulder and walk across the river. And when you get to the other side, set them down in a pile so that in the days to come, when you're walking along the banks of the river, with your children or your grandchildren or your neighbor's children, they're gonna see that pile of stones and ask why. And in that moment, you will have the opportunity to tell the story. Amen.